Welcome inside the calm before the storm. You know, I love how life can be, and I love to see growth in, in, in cats that come into the game Hint, hint, and uh, just progressively grow. And this brother, I had the honor of sitting down with him when he was a part of the BET show, The Game, but it wasn't by himself like we're going to do a one-to-one -one tonight. So it is an honor to welcome him back because he went from Bryce Blueprint to Lawrence. Well, in between that, he was Dan. Now he, you know, he's executive producer. He's a filmmaker. He's expanding his growth as an actor. Jay Ellis. That's good. Mr. Ambassador. That's good. Welcome back, man. What's going on, man? Good to see you, sir. It's good to see you, too, Continue success to you. I hope I grow into this voice one oh, day. Oh, man, come on. No, come on. Let, leave a lane for the brother. <laughs> leave me one lane, man. I just need one little lane. That's oh, you're all. killing that lane, but man. Any, well, thank you. Anytime you need me to do anything for you, sir, <laughs> in terms of the voice department, I'm just a telephone call away. I got you. I remember that. I'm going to have you done all my phone calls from now. I'll be like, hey, hey Lenny, what you doing this weekend? Hey, brother, I'm down. I'm down. I can work it out. I can work it out. Brother. Yeah, man. Ambassador. Yeah, man. ABFF. Yeah. Let's talk about that first, because you know why? I, I love uh, the Black Film Festival. <laughs> One, because it's in Miami. Right. <laughs> but aside from that, um, you see, a lot of people don't understand that there's a process to life, right? And a lot of people just really got to know you when you got to the game, and they right. really know you now since right, you've been right, on Insecure. Right. <laughs> but what they may not know is that, Jay, you've been... You've been grinding a lot of short films for a mighty right. long time. Grinding. Right? Grinding. Grinding. Hard. And you, I mean, that's what's dope about ABFF, right? Like, it's all a process. People think when you when you hear somebody's name, you're like, oh, this person just blew up so fast. Yeah. Like, yo, Tiffany Haddish been grinding for nine years. Yeah, man. Maybe even longer than that, actually. Like, yeah. I've probably known Tiffany for seven, eight of those nine. Wow. Uh, you right, right? And so, like, you know... And that's a lot of us, and you know, and there's that's that's filmmakers like Ryan Coogler and and Mr. Capel. Like both of them had you know short films that were at ABFF. They okay. both won. Pete Chapman is another cat who's now directing a ton of television as well as features. You know, it it's it's the festival has been this amazing place to foster, to nurture, to to uh, expose young talent to executives, to fans, to uh, other writers and directors, other actors. And like I've, like you said, I was fortunate enough that there have been projects that I've been who've, who, shorts yeah. that people never saw right. that are part of my early career that, right. that, that have been a part of that as well. You know, uh, a lot of people don't understand that there's, that, like I said, that the process is, is definitely interesting, but they also have a challenge. And maybe you can speak on this real quickly before we go into one of your favorite R&B songs, Hint. <laughs> All right, because um, this brother has an extensive music playlist. Um, of how to network effectively when you get in big circles like that, what, what would be the one tip that you could recommend everyone to do? I would say, you know, listen, I think it's it, there's a lot of things. I think, first of all, to me, what's always interesting is, is I, I want to know where Lenny is from. I want to know what your background is and how you got to where you are, right? I don't want to... I, I truly believe that you can't just be asking and taking all the time from people. Like this creative process is a yin and yang thing. Like we, we do this together, right? Whether it's you don't act in a vacuum, you don't write in a vacuum, or you may write in a vacuum, but ultimately somebody else is gonna read your writing and, and it's gonna get noted and you're gonna have to start working on it. But everything that we do is about relationship. Mm. And so I think it's more important to actually have a relationship with somebody and know somebody and somebody like, yo, I wanna grab a drink with you, break bread with you. Yo, my family is doing a barbecue this weekend come through <laughs> like I want to know you and break bread with you sure. and then we can work together and not and not saying that it's a prerequisite but I think that you know life is short yeah. and when you make a movie or you make a television show you're going to war every day and it's a fight and it's a fight to get the money it's a fight to get the script right it's a fight to get the production the way you want it it's a fight to get the edit mm. the music that it's a fight you. to get in festivals it's a fight to get sold it's a fight to get 3000 theaters as opposed to 500 theaters it's a fight to get the press it's all a fight every yeah. single day and so i think that when you go out and you network you got to know that like yes you're there for business but also like these are people these are all real people who yeah. go home to their families and they got lives and other stuff and like be considerate of that uh, and, and I think for me, the number two thing is be ready. Ah, be the ready. Actor, the be actor, ready. the right? film director. <laughs> I'm putting it all out there. The executive producer. You're hearing from the ambassador of the uh, Black Film Festival for 2018. If you're going to Miami, that's the place you need to be in June. 
mid-June. You need to be there. ABFF.com. Get all the, the details. And shout out to Brother Jeff Friday for this amazing uh, mind brainstorm, this ingenious uh, piece of work. How would you, when you got the opportunity, this wonderful opportunity to be a part of Insecure, well, let's first talk about your, your, your relationship and how you met Issa. Yeah, I, I OG. I originally met Issa at a uh, LA Urban League event. Look at that. Uh, we were both being honored for community service. She was the the female recipient that year. I was the male recipient that year, and that was the first place we actually met. It's funny because last year there was a meme that went around, and it was like <laughs> freshman year versus senior year, and oh, yeah. there was a picture of me and Issa from like four or five years ago when we first met. And that was literally our first meeting is what people don't know. And then the senior year picture was Issa and I. It was I, when I got the opportunity to present Issa at Black Girls Rock. Wow, that's uh, deep. Yeah, so, so that was really, really dope. Both of us just died laughing at that. And I remember like six, like not even six, but like maybe two months earlier on her Facebook timeline, that picture popped up and she sent it to me. She was like, oh, we met three <laughs> years ago today. And then literally like it was a meme a few weeks later, like which was a lot of fun. But yeah, that was the first time that I got that I got to meet her. Um, and obviously, she had already done Awkward Black Girl, and yeah. and and that had taken off cool. and had been very successful. And she was at that time writing a pilot for Shonda and, and ABC. Um, and I just told, like, you know, I was just like, yo, if there's ever an opportunity to work together, I would, I would love to. Like, I, you know, I Pretty watched. Much what I told you, yeah. if there's anything, you need my voice. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> and you see what happened. You, you see fast happened, forward, yeah. things happen, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, man, that was an amazing, an amazing night, an amazing moment. We were Beverly Hills at the Beverly Hills. Uh, the Century, the Century Plaza Hotel, got, whatever that is. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll I never forget you. that. Yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, what's man. up with Lawrence, man? You know, he's just trying to figure it oh, out. Oh, come man. on, man. He's just, How do you let a beautiful chocolate lady like that, like you know, just slip through your fingers? You know, here's the thing. I think, I think Lawrence. It's interesting. Like, I see so much of myself in Lawrence, and and not through his individual experiences, okay. but through him getting in the way of himself, right? He's constantly in his own way, and some of that comes through him not using his words, as as my co-star Yvonne Orgy always says. Uh, but, like, you know, he's he's doesn't want to talk about vulnerability. He doesn't want to talk about the fact that he's afraid or mad or upset or doesn't understand something or his feelings are hurt, and he doesn't want to be embarrassed, right? And I think that that is ultimately... You know he got he get he gets crippled by this fear in season one, and that's where we meet him at. Like he's not truly just a bum. Mm. He he's <laughs> had an experience happen to him that made him crippled by fear. It's depression, and, and we don't. Oh, okay. You know, there's some depression there that that okay. that that needs to kind of be dealt with. And and when Issa's like, "Yo, you need to get up or get out." Exactly. You man. know what I'm saying? That's what kind of makes him pick it all back up together and then obviously we see see the relationship happen and then listen she stepped out and did the thing you know what i'm saying i get it yeah i saw that part she, saw that she part. stepped out and did the thing but then you did a thing too but then lawrence had met his co-worker <laughs> or his or not co-worker but they had worked in the same <laughs> plaza together when he was at the best buy and then fast forward to season two because we don't even need to go through all of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we don't need to get, well, fast forward to season two. Uh, <laughs> they're friends at yeah. the beginning of the season. Okay, all right. Yeah. They're friends, if, if, if you will. Um, if you will. <laughs> so, uh, no, nah, but I think, again, like, I think he, again, like, you know, there was a fear there, right? He had just had his heart broken. Okay. And so now he was crippled with fear about being in a relationship and what that meant. Was he going to get his heart broken all over again? And I think he just made a lot of bad decisions. And I think, you know, a dude who he's ambitious, uh, he's smart. Yeah. Um, he's also a black man in this world. Uh, he's, uh, we like to say, we always joke that he's probably a serial monogamous, so he doesn't <laughs> even really know what it means to be single. You know, when you throw in a lot of those things, it kind of messes with your head after a while, especially if you're not talking to nobody about them. You know what yeah. I mean? You feel like you can't talk to your boys about them. You know, how, how much character research do you do on, on a character that really oh, wasn't even developed? Oh man, I, I, do you a look lot. At the script and, a lot. You know, so for this, for the season one, for first season, I was like, "Yo, what is a dude who just sit at home all day? Like, what does he do? Like, I'm trying to figure. I'm out all the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. in these streets, and so like, I don't even know what my bed look like right now. Like, I'm trying <laughs> to figure it out. But like, I I sat at home for six weeks right. straight. 
Like I didn't work out. I ain't go to dinner. I was telling people I was I was like, yo, I just I'm out of town. I can't see you. Right. And I literally just sat at home and I was just trying to figure out like what is in that dude's mind and like what is he filling his time with? Because that's a lot of time right, to just right. be sitting at home all day. Yeah. Right. Um, and then fast forward after getting very comfortable. Yeah. Right, <laughs> real quick. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You have to. <laughs> figured that out real quick. I was on the computer. I was watching like four different programs. The view would come on. Like I had everything going. Lenny oh, sure. in the background. I got it all going on at one time. Like I didn't cooked i done planned out my meals i know what i'm ordering for lunch postmates is coming but um after i figured that out then i got to go do it you know and, and i think that there's some stuff i always say that for me i feel like my job is the 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 script is like a blueprint the script is like instructions to build something and let's say it's to build a house for example and i think that isa and printers and our writers give me this amazing framework to build this beautiful house and then i get to come through and i get to furnish it I, and i, I get like to that. put i get to put my finishes in it and i get to paint it and i get to i get to put the window treatments up and i get to put you know this tile on the fireplace and to me that part of of it my work comes in in, in between the white space you know what i love it man yeah, that's a wonderful coloration that you laid out are you still a scribbler you write a lot. I write a lot. I heard. Is it true that you have you like a special pencil? Uh, <laughs> how'd you find this out? Hey, yo, man, come on! Don't, don't, I just do my work. Uh, you gotta a, do the work, right? It's a Palomino, I, I, I do it. I do. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a. It was actually so. Uh, I had a couple. There's a couple great mechanical pencils that I had, and I would use them at work on my scripts. And one of my DP saw me one day, and he was like, "Oh, you love pencils?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "But don't nobody use lead no more." Like he ain't gonna really know what. I, what, what. Like, I thought he was just trying to like relate. I thought he was just trying to hey, connect. Someone is I don't still know. using. They're still making the yeah, pencils. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, and so he was like, "I'm gonna bring something for you." And he brought these two pencils that. Uh, uh, I'm not even trying to geek out on y'all, but they're just beautiful pencils. Like they're I don't even know, they're, they're, they're high-end high pencils. Right? Yeah, they're yeah, very beautiful yeah. pencils, yeah. super soft lead, um, and and they come with like a silver cap on the end of wow. them and a clip on them, so you can clip them to stuff. And it's literally, I write all the time. I, I write notes with them. My my I, people always joke my scripts look like they got hieroglyphics on them because I'm oh, constantly right. just writing all over my scripts. And that helps. That helps yeah. you. What, what do you write on your scripts? One hundred percent. Are you writing direction? Are you writing what you need to do? Are you writing emphasis on words? I can't give you all the stuff. Okay, no, no, no. I just want to know some of the secrets. No, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, so, you know, for me, it would be, you know, because there's things to think about when you think about two characters having a conversation. There's relationship, right? right. And and our past, right? right? Okay. If we're just meeting each other for the first time, that's one thing. Okay. Then then that's a whole nother set of, of thoughts and, and a process. Am I nervous with this person? Sure. Do I know anything about this person's past that I need to be con considering when I'm speaking to them? If we have passed, right, then I'm thinking about, okay, well, when was the last time we saw each other and what happened? And how does that inform this conversation yeah, right yeah, now? Or how does the right. way you made me feel inform this conversation right now? Or what am I trying to get from you that I'm not directly saying, Dude. but I'm indirectly saying it through these lines? And so for me, it's just a, 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 lot, of, a lot of those things. And do you get this feedback from the director or do you kind of analyze the script yourself and then you kind of do what you do? I, for me, that's my job. Got you. For me, that's my job. I think, again, like my job is once I once I get through a script and break it down, I feel like my job is to now walk in and give you this character that I've crafted, but all these different options of a character and, and reactions and thoughts that he may have and feelings that he may have. And then I think where directors to me are mad valuable is and like invaluable, actually, and 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 how they cradle you and kind of keep you safe in the process is they help you go deeper into those things and explore more of those things that, mm. you know, you say that's red, but I'm like, yo, if we get a little bit closer to that, maybe it's ox blood. If we get a little <laughs> bit closer to that, maybe it's something else. And gotcha. I think that's what a director is. They're really dope for that. to like helping you dig a little bit deeper. Well, um, speaking of directors and great actors, I understand you're a big fan of Steve McQueen. Is that true? Love. What was it about Steve McQueen that you love? This, this motorcycle riding, like just, I, it just, just uh, first of all, as an actor, I think there's something that's really they play some some iconic characters, um, and so there's there's that. I think uh, as a fashion icon, like people always say, this dude was in jeans and a t-shirt, and he made it look cooler than anybody, and a leather jacket, he made it look cooler than anybody yeah, all yeah. the time. And glasses, and glasses, yeah. right? And uh, and and I every time I get a chance, like they, I got them sitting over there right now. Every time they put a new <laughs> pair of glasses out, I, I'm I'm getting a pair. 
Um, but then also, like, I ride bikes. I, I love like motorcycles. Yeah, so so there's also that. But he's, there was just a cool. He's a, he's a young cat, so you could you could, you could afford this. Man. See, I know a cat like me got to do a Harley Come on, where you're man. like a Mercedes. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be one of those on yeah, slingshot. Hard, they, but they like, completely lay back. You get the they heated seats back. now. You get like, the music. No, you, you get do. You the do. Bluetooth. You're there right. were some bad bikes. They are. Especially right. going, long, going, going long hauls. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'll do a slingshot. We're going to get out there and ride. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Ellis, look, you can ride with him down in Miami uh, mid-June. He will be a, the ambassador, the celebrity ambassador for ABFF. You do not want to miss this. For those of you who have a desire to be in, in theater in some way, shape, and form, or just in this business, because, you know, as we were talking a little earlier, six degrees of separation, you just never know who you're going to meet along the way who could possibly help. Because somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody can help along the way, for real. Got to let this brother leave, but I, th I can't thank you enough, Jay, for coming by tonight and thank just you, spending man. some time with us, as always. And continue success, man, thank in all you, that man. you do. I'm surprised, though, that you probably didn't consider a a you know a career in military. Your dad was in my military. My dad was Air Force. My dad was Air Force. My grandfathers were all Air Force. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't do that. I'm surprised you didn't. And maybe you did, uh, thought about it for a moment, but went in a different direction. I'm surprised you didn't play ball because you got the high court. I, I hooped in college. But you but, didn't, you know, didn't, but I didn't I didn't play play. Yeah. You modeled. Yeah, you modeled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you modeled. So I'm surprised you didn't do that. But yeah. but at what age did you get bit by the, the acting thing that you said, you know what, I want to do this? It's interesting, man. I don't I don't I don't remember an age. I just remember a feeling. And for me it was always the feeling of watching movies with my parents and TV shows with my parents. My dad was always into comedy. So that's so wow. Richard Pryor and Eddie and Eddie Murphy and Flip and and Bill Murray and Steve Martin and like George Carlin. My dad was always into comedy and and so I feel like that's where I watched a lot of that with him. And then my mom was always into these westerns. Oh, and that's also some where my Steve McQueen comes from. Like that was stuff <laughs> that my mom would watch, right? She was always into like, you know, who was coming in town on a horse and like slinging them up and pow pow. And like there was something <laughs> about the balance that I loved. But what I what it also felt for me was like this comfort of having it was a family thing. We did it together and we sat oh, there together and we watched these things. And so that made me fall in love with storytelling, man. I could completely just dive in and be there for a you second. You a great imagination. Yeah, because of them. But speak of comedy, though, you executive produced uh, a comedy. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. I, ex I EP'd this, uh, executive produced this this digital series for UMC called Heart Medicine. Uh, UMC, Bob Johnson's yeah, new joint? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. Yeah, Urban okay. Movie Channel. Uh, it's called Hard Medicine. It's created by a young, talented woman uh, named Melissa Ina F. Melissa Eno Effa. Uh, she, a uh, young black girl, graduated from Loyola. Her mother was a doctor, and she was like, yo, I want to see more black people in, in medicine, and we don't get to see that on television. Sure. And I also love The Office, and I love Scrubs, so let me put all this together. All right. And so she made this beautiful show, man, that's just, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of laughs, and we get to play with looks into the camera and breaking the fourth wall. That's and, good. You know, you get all the relationship between the characters, but then you also got all these characters coming in with whatever their illness of the week is, or they hypochondria, or you know what I mean so we constantly get to bring in a new cast of characters and, and to, to keep it fun keep and it interesting uh, and you, you use the word cast of characters because in this pro special project that you're working on uh, you, there's going to be a psychopath cast of character <laughs> uh, that's going to possibly emerge yeah can, can you talk a little bit I might about get that? in trouble for this one but uh, I might get I might get they might try to cut me out the whole movie so if y'all see nah, the movie and never, all of a sudden nah, it's just nah, like a side nah, of my nah, face nah. you'll know it's because of this man no 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 I got the opportunity man to go to South Africa for three three months to go work on a film uh, uh, I think they're going to call it Escape Room. Originally it was titled The Maze, but I'm not 100% positive. It. But um, it'll be out sometime soon, hopefully. But uh, uh, yeah, man, I, got, I get to play a dude who's completely against everything I've ever played before. Absolute alpha male. He's a total, he's a jerk, he's an ass, whatever you want to call him. He's the dude that like, he's always got the funny joke at somebody else's expense. And wow. after a while, you're like, yo, just stop picking on people. Yeah. Um, I know some people like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah we're always just, having one yeah, in our circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so, uh, you know, you might think he's a bit of a sociopath, but ultimately it's these six characters all end up in a space together and, and kind of have to fight for, fight for their lives. Wow. Yeah. I can't wait for that. And it's, it's a, coming it's a out, fun man. It's Whatever a fun name one. you want it, just claim it. It's a fun Put it on your vision board. <laughs> it's done. It's done, man. Thank, Thank you so you much. Boss. I Jay Ellis. You, man. Watch him. Catch him. Walk up to him. He's approachable. 
Would you not say? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it just depends on what time of day. No, I'm messing with you. Yeah, absolutely, man. ABFF, you'll be in Miami mid-June. You don't want to miss it, baby. It's, it's a wonderful, phenomenal event, no matter what part of the industry that you want to pursue, and it's definitely uh, well worth the effort getting there. And I'll see you in Miami because I'll never pass up an opportunity to be in Miami, baby. That's it's, what's up. It's so sexy. <laughs> hey, look, the Quiet Storm up next. Continue success with you, man. We'll be watching you closely, brother. All right, Jay Ellis, baby, on side the car before the storm. Quiet storm, ladies. Get the bubble bath ready. I'm coming.